our viewers once more we're back again october 30th 2024 is the date today and today we're seeing something that is concerning about the end of the world now isaiah and jesus had two ideas and had two had two dimensions or spoke about the end of the world and they spoke in the language that was prophetic. So today our morning devotion is going to try to tell us what was the meaning of Isaiah and Jesus' speech about the end time. So our morning devotion is entitled, There is nothing beyond. There is nothing beyond. Let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we're back again. And we want to study your word. Please be our teacher in your precious holy name, I pray. Amen. So, there is nothing beyond. We're seeing the idea between Isaiah and Jesus and what they were really trying to mean. It was a prophetic words and what they were trying to mean. Now, these words were mainly three. The worm, the dead, and the fire. The worm, the dead, and the fire. What are these words? What significant meaning do they have in the end times? So our scripture reading today is extracted from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 24. Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 24. It says, And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed, transgressed against me. For their womb does not die, and their fire is not quenched. For their womb does not die, and their fire is not quenched. So there are three verbs here that we're really going to see. The worm, the fire, and the coppers. All these were terms that were used by Isaiah and a description of the end time. So, the morning devotion is trying to tell us that the prophet Isaiah well, was really describing about the punishment in verses Isaiah chapter 66 and the verses 23 was trying to tell us about the eternal results, what will happen in the end times. Now, Jesus picked the same image. Jesus said the same image, and the same image that Isaiah was using was the worm. And Jesus was trying to say, the worm doesn't die and the fire isn't quenched. The worm doesn't die and the fire isn't quenched. Let's not forget we're dealing with three verbs, worm, fire, and the coppers. How are they dealing with the end time? Now, Jesus spoke about the human remains. And these remains were being burnt at a place called Gehenna. Gehenna, that was the place. And he was trying to say that this place, the Gehenna, was consisting of dead human body, dead carcasses, and it's a place where they used to burn dead people like criminals. They used to burn them in that place, Gehenna. And that was the dumping ground in the valley of Hinnom. Now, however, the Bible in Mark chapter 9, verses 48, claims that this would be the Christians claim that this was Jesus trying to say the, the place of fire in hell. That is a description of what Jesus said. But now we're going to see 
what did Jesus and Isaiah really want to mean when they used the three verbs in their description of hell? The worm, the coppers, and fire. What do these images mean in the Hebrew ideological contest in which they were said or being claimed? Now, there is a strict theologian, a strict theologian, and he was called Emmanuel Patevel. And in 1891, he wrote the book, Problem de Immorality, The Problem of Immorality, in which he clarifies the above, the above three verbs. The sweet gentleman clarifies the three verbs, the worm, the fire, and the coppers. Now, first of all, we're going to see a worm. A worm is a being or an animal that consumes already dead things. It already consumes the dead carcasses. It cannot survive on life. It consumes the already dead. So why they use the worm? It was simply because the worm is an illustration of internal perishing, internal death. If it is feeding on the dead, it means those dead will never again arise. So a worm was just as significant that the dead will be gone for good. Simply because the worm is feeding on the dead carcasses. So it was an indication that the dead will never arise. Second symbol was the fire. Why did Jesus and Isaiah use the fire? Simply because we see in olden days the fire was used and it could cause an irreparable damage. Irreparable. We see in cases of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was condemned to eternal fire. And is not and according to the basic biblical philosophy, fire is not eternal. The fire still burns up to now. However, the things the fire burns are of eternal. They cannot be repaired. For example, if a building caught fire and all the furniture in it and everything was burned, nobody can come and say, I'm repairing them again. It does irreparable damage. So Jesus and Isaiah were trying to point out about internal, how, what the true meaning of hell, that hell could cause internal death or internal destruction. There were no chances of arriving. Thirdly, the copper says, that is what we saw. Now, the copper says they saw were decaying. And they were decaying. They were decomposing. That means they were rotting. And they had no sign of coming back to life again. In conclusion, what Isaiah and Jesus were trying to portray, the worm, the fire, and the corpses, all illustrated that hell, there would be eternal destruction. When, peop when hell comes or when the end of time comes, there's going to be internal destruction. That was mainly what the three symbols were trying to say. So, the nation of unending suffering is not compatible with the vast symbolism we find in the biblical prophet's writing. No text of the Konko books of the books of the Bible contains a single syllable related to possible internal torments. There is no, we always think that the Bible was saying there's going to be an internal torment for, for hell, internal torment. I remember when we were still young, we would say they would burn you, they would burn your finger like for a whole week, only the, the fire is burning the finger and then it will go on to the next one and the fire will continue. But the Bible is trying to tell us there is no symbol 
that illustrates that illustrates that there will be an eternal torment of the condemned. For them is only one centered. There is nothing beyond. So all the teachings of the Bible that are saying eternal torment is not true. But what they were saying, there is nothing beyond. It is an eternal destruction. That is why they had to signify with the worm, fire, and coppers. Because they all cause damage that is irreparable. So, the Bible teachings claim, or some people were trying to say that there would be eternal torment. But Jesus and Isaiah are trying to tell us there is nothing beyond. Death happens, there will be internal death, and it will be eternal. It will not be a torment that will be happening or that will be postponed on and on. Mainly that was what they were trying to say. And also the Gehenna quoted by Jesus was a public place where the cadavers or dead bodies, animals and thieves, criminals were burnt. Never in the 14 times the term, the term, the term is used, is associated with painful torments. So brethren, we have a saying that when you die, there is a painful torment that goes on and on. But Isaiah and Jesus Christ have really tried to tell us that that is not true. The death will be eternal. It will be nothing beyond. And God has mercifully planned for a tenor end of the imp imp impenitent. God has really planned internal end of this sinful world. May God bless you, my brother. Whether the hell is internal, whether it is long lasting, one thing we want to say is avoid being among those people in hell. A voice is calling every day. Prepare your way. Leave your way to the destruction that is going to occur. May God bless you, brethren, as we listen and as we prepare for the end times. Where will you be? In hell or in heaven? Let's pray. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much because you warn us. Help us incline to your warnings and behave accordingly. In your precious holy name I pray.